Mr. Bricker. This is wonderfully kind of you. You can see the painting now, or after dinner, or wait until tomorrow. It's entirely up to you. I think I'd like a glimpse of it later this evening. Then I can take a proper look in the daylight when I have my wits about. You look as if you've spent the winter away from these shores. I've been in Alexandria. Really? I don't envy you. I'm not very good at abroad. What were you doing in Alexandria? Escaping the winter and looking at beautiful things. Beautiful and very ancient things. I don't agree. So you're collecting clothes for the Russian refugees? Do you have a clear record of how it came to be here? The second Earl was our collector. He bought it when he was quite a young man and on his grand tour. Which was when? 1789. We have a letter from his mother. She's just heard about the fall of the Bastille and her son was on his way through France. She was so desperate to get him home, she sent it by a special messenger. <laughs> Mothers. Some things never change. Lots of things never change. <laughs> Tomorrow I can show you some of the other pictures he brought back if you've time before you go. I have all the time in the world. I should enjoy it very much. There's coffee in the drawing room. Thank you. We'll be right in. Hi, sis. Come here, girl. But the English killed King Charles I to create a balance between the throne and parliament. I didn't kill him personally. I didn't shoot the imperial family. Goodness. Is this what they call a lively exchange of views? <laughs> it's about now that Papa usually fetches his gun. <laughs> Every figure shows a different kind of reverence. Some eager, some contemplative, some amazed. Even the magpie seems to have been struck dumb. You're very sharp. <laughs> Umbria was full of magpies, so Della Francesca chose a bird known for its chatter and made it silent in wonder. How beautiful it is. I think your picture may be a study for this angel. There are elements common to both. It was painted at the end of his life. I envy him to have been able to create something like this when death was closing in. I'd love to think that I could still do something that people talk about more than four centuries later. You don't sound very confident. I doubt they remember anything I've done by the time my body's cold. Well, I'm sure that's not true. You're not, but I like you for saying it. Come and look at this one. I'm afraid I'm taking up far too much of your time. Not true. I'm enjoying myself. I had such a nice evening. Me too. I love London. Sometimes I forget how much, but I do. I remember when I first arrived. You don't want to hear about all that. But I do. London scared me at first. I'd only been in a schoolroom a few months before, but my mother was eager. Why especially? We weren't really in the first rank in Cincinnati, still less when we moved to New York. My father was Jewish and the money was new, but there was a lot of it, and I was pretty. I suppose I can say that now I'm an old lady. <laughs> <laughs> and she thought you'd make a better match this side of the Atlantic. And suddenly here I was in these vast ballrooms. And all the other girls seemed to know what to do and what to wear and how to flirt. I bet you were more beautiful than all of them. More original, more real. <laughs> I certainly got a lot of names on my dance cards. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to me bragging. Please forgive me, I never talk about myself. Why did I say all that? Because I'm interested. Well, it's time for me to stop. We're nearly there. Can't we pretend we're not? and walk around the square again. <laughs> the truth is, I am quite lightheaded. Going out for a night on the town seems more my daughter's territory than my own. You can't know what a good time I had. Please, may we do it again? I doubt it. But I hear the offer is a compliment. You must make haste to reach Dieppe, where you are to seek out a Mr. Avebury. He will arrange for you to be taken aboard a packet and convey to safety, but do not delay if you hold your mother dear. Poor woman. I know how she felt. As for your collection, Mr. Avery 
or do what he can, but I'd rather every canvas or carving were tossed in the sea to your being one extra hour in that unhappy country. I'm glad he didn't take her advice. He did not. He brought crates and crates over, then went back after the reign of terror to buy more. And you have preserved them safely in this beautiful place. Glad you think it's beautiful. I think everything about Downton is beautiful, including its mistress. <laughs> you mustn't say such things. I have to, or I'll burst. What's burst? <laughs> I was just saying that being allowed to touch a painting like this <laughs> would make me burst. It's wonderful to show it to someone so appreciative. Yes. No one can say you're not appreciative, Mr. Bricker. Did you have a nice journey? Excellent. Thank you very much. Hello, Lord Grantham. You look very splendid. I'm afraid we're ships that pass in the night, Mr. Bricker. I have to go to Sheffield, but I'll see you tomorrow if you're still here when I get back. Goodbye, Cora. So, here we are again. I'm beginning to find Downton quite homelike. Good. You're very welcome. As long as you behave. Something. It's not your maid. I waited till she'd gone. You must leave. Mr. Brickle, you must leave. I hope I didn't wake you. No, not at all, my lord. Miss Baxter's only just come down, so her ladyship will still be awake. Mr. Bricker, I've asked you twice now. Will you please go? You said yourself. Who knows when I'll be back? Mr. Bricker. Don't pretend, Cora. You know something's happened between us. You know things have changed now. I feel it, and I know you do. When did someone last cherish you? When did someone even listen to you? I've seen you with your family, ignored and passed over. None of this is any reason. I'm glad you're still awake. The dinner was over early. It seemed easier to come back. I'm sorry if it's a disappointment. It isn't. Mr. Bricker was just leaving. I'm not here at Lady Grantham's invitation. Then will you please leave at mine? Robert, let him go. You can't be surprised. When you chose to ignore a woman like Cora, you must have known not every man would be as blind as you. So sorry, darling. Father and I are just playing a stupid game, and we knocked over a lamp. Oh, if you're sure. I'm sure, puppet. Good night. Sleep tight. I think that is my exit too. Wait. The car is waiting, sir. Your case is inside it. Thank you, Carson. <laughs> <laughs>